holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. As we begin this sacred liturgy, let us invite Jesus into our home. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life, eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose Son was pleased to be welcomed in St. Martha's house as a guest, grant, we pray, that through her intercession, serving Christ faithfully and our brothers and sisters, we may merit to be received by you in the halls of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And let us listen with the ear of the heart. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us as, and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love 
and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. The word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you holy ones, for naught is lacking to those who fear him. The great grow poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord want for no good thing. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Mary, burdened with much serving, came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do all the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, raise your hand if you are a Martha. How many Marthas here today? How many Marys? There's usually more Marthas than Marys. Would you say that's true, Sister B? Well, Jesus had a very special affection for Martha. Jesus seemed to be attracted to people with something I call holy chutzpah. You know, Martha wasn't afraid to get into Jesus' face. You might remember after her brother Lazarus died and Jesus came to visit her, Martha ran to Jesus and said, Hey, buster, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Do you remember that? She was good at the wag of the finger. In today's gospel, Martha is really fit to be tied. Her best friend, Jesus, is coming for dinner, and she's in the kitchen slaving away, making ravioli and eggplant parm and cannoli and all this kind of stuff. And her sister is in the living room at the feet of Jesus, and she's doing something very important. Do you remember the word? 
listening. She was listening to Jesus and gazing at him. Dare we say falling in love with him. And so Martha comes out and sees this very lovely scene and says, hey, Jesus, tell that sister of mine to help me. She doesn't even address her sister directly. Have you ever done that? Sister B, tell Glenn to get his job done. Tell her to help me. I'm slaving in the kitchen, and she's sitting there with googly eyes looking at you. What's that all about? Now, I am quite certain Jesus was not angry. I'm sure he smiled. Martha, Martha, there you go again. I say that to myself hundreds of times again, by the way. You know, you're busy about a lot of things, and I appreciate it. I'm delighted you're cooking me a meal. I'm hungry. I'm a little tired after all my preaching and walking around. But Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. What is that better part? Attention to the Lord. Over the centuries, there has been a misinterpretation of this passage, and it kind of can be summarized this way, Martha versus Mary. And it really isn't a conflict of attitudes. Rather, Jesus is trying to reconcile Martha and Mary. It's important to contemplate, and it's important to share the fruits of our contemplation. But there has to be an interaction between the two. I often use the figure eight symbol or the infinity symbol as a sign of the spiritual life. Action and contemplation feed one another. So it's not about being Martha or Mary. It's about being Martha and Mary. Or as St. Ignatius of Loyola would say, we are called to become contemplatives in action. And I'd like to invite Charles to stand with me for a moment. This is Charles's final Mass as a seminarian during this particular summer. If you please come to the carpet. I'm calling you to the carpet for the first time. So Charles, would you like to say a little word to your brothers and sisters? Uh, yes, absolutely. Just uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be here these last couple months and participate in this family. Um, it's been an honor and a joy and a privilege to get to know some of you and to be here and participate in Mass with you every day and um, just get a little taste of what um, the community is like here in Kingston. And um, so thank you. Thank you, Charles, and we're going to give you a blessing. I'd like everybody to stand, if you don't mind. And Charles, as you know, the seminary can be a frenetic place at times. No? Right, yes. And it's easy to lose the contemplative spirit, but we're going to pray this morning that that attention to God always remains at the center of your vocation. If you'd all raise your hands in a gesture of blessing. And Charles, uh, we love you as a brother. And we honor and respect your call to the priesthood. May your transition to the major seminary be full of wonder, joy, and gratitude. And may Almighty God bless you and protect you from all harm, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Virtual hug. Virtual hug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let us pray for the Holy Father and the bishops and all leaders in the church. May they be filled with a spirit of contemplation. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For families that suffer division, 
May the Lord go about affecting unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. For all affected by this coronavirus pandemic, may the Lord reveal a healing and give us strength and courage as we persevere. We pray to the Lord. And we remember today all those dedicated to a life of contemplation, especially monastics throughout the world. May the Lord keep them faithful to their charism. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the dying and for all those who attend to them. We pray to the Lord. And at today's Mass, we pray for the happy repose of our brother Chris Patton and for all those who miss them. We pray to the Lord. And our brother, Eric Godet, just celebrated his 35th wedding anniversary. So God bless you, Eric. You and the beautiful Yvette. You must have been two years old when you got married. You look so young, Eric. Loving God, help us to acknowledge you as Martha did, as Christ, the Son of God, the one who was coming into the world. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Humble you, O Lord, may your sacrifice, your sight this day, be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from all my sins. Let us stand praying that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders in St. Martha, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as our homage of love was pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim. 
holy, holy, holy Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Felipe, our Bishop, Victor, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have died in your mercy, especially Chris Patton. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And my friends, we might offer up a prayer for Terry Clark, Bob's wife. May the Lord give her healing and strength. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Attentive to the will of God, the desires of his heart, we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
an act of spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, Turn us away from the cares of this fallen world so that following the example of St. Martha, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my friends, we will have confessions this evening beginning at 4.30 and ending at a quarter of 6.00. And then we'll have Mass at 6 p.m. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael. Hail Mary. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia, singing Alleluia.